know hats can tell us a lot about what job a person has, what activities they're participating in, or sometimes it could be a representation of a person's heritage. Let's play a guessing game and see what each of these hats tells us about the person wearing it. What job does this person have? He's a police officer. Can you guess what this person does? She's a cowgirl. What job does this person have? He's a chef. What activity is this person doing? He's a mariachi band singer. What occupation does this person have? He's a firefighter. This person is attending a ceremony, but what ceremony? It's a graduation ceremony. Let's look at a historical photo. This person is wearing a Native American headdress. What job does this person have? He's an umpire for baseball. Last one, what do you think this hat is for? It's a birthday party hat for a dog. This is a traditional headpiece called a mung. It is used in Vietnamese weddings. Can you think of any other headpieces that are used in weddings of different cultures? This is a Western bridal veil. Most experts agree that you can trace its roots back to Rome, where a bride used to walk down the aisle with a veil over her face in order to disguise herself from any evil that wanted to take away her happiness. This is a Suno Kakushi. It literally translates to a horn hiding hat. It's a traditional headgear worn in Shinto wedding ceremonies in Japan. It is traditionally worn to veil the bride's horns of jealousy, ego, and selfishness. Can you think of any other wedding hats? Do you know any hat jokes? I can't think of any off the top of my head. Many of us may think that a hat is just an ordinary thing that people wear sometimes. And although that may be true for us Americans right now, other groups, like the British, still wear them, and in the past, Americans wore them each and every day as a part of their normal outfit. Hats and headwear tell a story about the materials available and also characteristics about the people who wear them. Let's rewind, go back in time, and discover the history of a hat. Imagine a time thousands of years ago when people roamed in areas that were freezing cold. These early people couldn't go to the store and buy a hat and jacket like we can, they had to use what was readily available, like plants, animal skin, and animal fur. In 1991, scientists found a 5,000-year-old Iceman, who we now call Otzi, buried and mummified in the mountains in Italy, and he was wearing a hat made of brown bear fur. This guy is the oldest person to be found wearing a hat. One of the earliest pictures of someone wearing a hat was found on the wall of an Egyptian tomb called Thebes Tomb. We aren't completely sure why this particular hat was worn. We can only guess that they were intended to help provide some relief and shade from the hot sun in Africa. This straw hat is completely different from the extravagant ones we see worn by kings and pharaohs in movies. Hats like the Nimes hat belonging to King Tut were not just worn because of harsh weather, but to show a pharaoh's status in society. This headdress is a royal blue cloth with stripes laying under a gold crown decorated with a cobra and vulture. Although ancient Egyptians wear emblems of animals on their hats, there are some cultures that have animals that wear hats. In India, elephants are decorated and celebrated each year during the Elephant Festival. Elephants are important in Hindu mythology, so they are honored at this time and decorated with colorful paint, jewelry, and head plates. Did you even know that in the past, horse owners in the United States put straw hats on their horses? Horses suffered from the extreme heat and owners gave their horses hats to provide some shade from the sun. 
Not only is giving a straw hat to a horse a thing of the past in the US, but so is the fashion of wearing a formal hat as a part of your everyday outfit. Let's look at two types of hats that were worn daily by people when your grandparents or great grandparents or great great grandparents were kids just like you. Your grandparents loved these hats because they were trendy and were made famous by celebrities. First, let's talk about a fedora. A fedora is a hat made of felt and has a wide brim, a crown that's indented and pinched, and a ribbon around the crown. Fedoras started as a hat for women, but men started wearing them when they saw a British prince wearing one. Tom Landry, the Dallas Cowboy coach, made these hats even more famous. Another popular hat was the pillbox hat. The pillbox is a small hat with no brim, straight sides, and a level top. They typically came in solid colors and weren't too fancy, but if they were, it was usually decorated with a veil or some small jewelry. The pillbox hat had been out for a long time, but Jackie Kennedy, President John F. Kennedy's wife, made these hats even more popular when she began wearing them. Milliners or hat makers began creating pillbox hats by hand in the 1930s. And although we now have the technology that allow us to produce all kinds of hats very quickly today, many folks still go to milliners to have a custom hat designed. In order to create a hat, a milliner takes a piece of heated felt and places it on top of a hat block pattern. There are many different types of hat blocks, but this particular one will create a simple lady's hat. Next, the milliner heats and steams the felt. Heating and steam the material makes it smooth and easier to stretch and work with. The hat is then tied to create creases and steamed and stretched again to remove any wrinkles. Once the hat is dry, it's removed from the block and then the milliner adds a sweatband. The hat will look just like this one when it's completed. Hats have been around most of human history and there are so many types of hats that they would take an eternity to highlight them all. The next time you're out in your community, put on your thinking cap and pay attention to the hats that you see. What do the hats that you see tell you about a person? What does your hat reveal about you? Did you know that the pleats in a chef's hat used to correspond to how many ways that chef could cook an egg? Sometimes they got up to 100 pleats. Can you think of 100 ways to cook an egg? Other times it corresponded to the number of cooking techniques that chef had mastered. How many pleats would be in your hat? It's fun to explore different cultures and areas of the world. Luckily, you don't have to fly. All you need is your imagination. Here, I use everyday computer paper, crayons, and watercolors to make toy accessories. Now I can make great stories with my characters. Would you like to learn how to make your own batik African-inspired head wraps? Come join me. We're going to learn how to do it. What you will need is a piece of paper. I'm just using regular computer paper, a box of crayons, some watercolors, a paintbrush, and some water. The first step is you are going to take your pencil and make a design of your choice. I'm gonna show you a very simple way to make your own design using your hands. Then what we're going to do is we're going to color. And now comes the fun part. You're going to take your paper that you just colored and crumple it up. Once you have your paper balled up, let's go ahead and open it up and we're gonna paint it with black watercolor. The black's gonna fill in all the cracks and it's gonna look really fun like it's fabric. And there you have it. This is just paper, crayon, and watercolor, but it sure does look like some nice fabric that's been batik dyed. 
And so here we have our African inspired batik fabric, which is actually paper. What we're going to do to make it like a head wrap is we're going to fold it hot dog style once and then hot dog style twice. I'm going to show you two ways that you can wrap your dolls. I have this plastic little model and you can use whatever doll you have at home. And what we're going to do is I'm going to show you the first style. So we're going to use this. I'm going to wrap, I'm going to put the base of the head, the back of the head on the bottom of the back. We're going to fold it up and this one goes in front and we're just going to kind of fold this down and then the other one will also fold down. Can you imagine what stories you can tell through your dolls that are worldwide stories? So this is one style. I think that's really cute. She looks like some sort of royalty. Let's do another one. We're going to use that same technique where the back of the head is in the back of the paper on the bottom. We're going to roll it up. And this time, instead of just folding it, I'm going to take these two ends and I'm going to twist it. See, isn't that great? It's, it has the wax in it, so it's more durable than if it was just paper. Here we go. Kind of tuck it in. You can also kind of smush it, experiment with it. And I have a fun little head wrap. Hmm, maybe you can create stories and characters. Being able to travel the world just through play is just so fun. I hope you're inspired to do something similar at home. Have fun! I usually don't wear hats very much, but when it's cold outside, I definitely put this one on. What about you? Four score and seven years ago, one of America's most famous presidents, President Lincoln, was known for his top hat. His top hat was known as a stovepipe hat. It was very, very, very tall. And we still associate that hat with him today. That hat is so famous, we still have it on display at the National Museum of American History in Washington, DC. I'm wearing a church hat, and a church hat is traditionally worn by African American women in the United States. A church hat is a mix of European style and African head wraps like the gaily worn by women in Africa, but as you can see, they do look quite different. A ghili is a vibrant and colorful wrap scarf and it's intentionally worn to grab everyone's attention. These hats are usually worn at formal events like huge birthday parties and weddings. Black slaves also wore scarves, but they wore them for different reasons. Scarves helped protect their hair from the sun. They were used as a sign of poverty and they were also used to simply hide a slave's hair. Slave owners did not like the coarse texture and look of a slave's hair, so many slaves were forced to hide their hair with rags. Sunday church service was one of the very few times that slaves were actually allowed to dress up, and they seized this opportunity to wear their Sunday best, and this evolved to include a church hat. More importantly, Church hats served as a way to honor God, and many other groups like the Jewish, the Amish, and Muslims wear head coverings for the same reason. On any given Sunday, if you walk inside a historical African-American church, then you're bound to see ladies wearing big bows and patterns, gems, pearls, lace and silk on a church hat. What do you think of when you think of a construction hat? It usually has a hard yellow shell like this one, right? Did you know they come in lots of colors? Each different company might use different colors to signal things. A fire marshal or fire inspector might wear a red hat. A foreman or an engineer might wear a white hat. A new person might wear a green hat, but these can change from site to site. This yellow hard hat belongs to an electrician, and when he wore it to a job site, it helped people know that he was an electrician. If you ever pass by a building site with workers in hard hats, you might see yellow, white, green, blue, or even pink hats. Often, the colors mean the person wearing it does a specific job at that construction site, but the job each color signals might change depending on where they're working. 
The most important thing is that each person on the site is wearing the right protective gear. Why do they even wear these hats? Well, to stay safe, of course. See how it sits so high on my head? That's how it protects from impacts or falling objects. There's resistance in space for the material of the hat to bend a little under the weight or pressure before the person's head is in danger. Hard hats have to be made of super strong and durable materials like plastic. They're built to resist heat, electrical damage, falling or flying objects, and impact so the person wearing it is safe when they go to work. See all those stickers? For the electrician's yellow hat, those are all the safety courses the owner of that hat is certified in. This white hat here belongs to an engineer. These stickers mean that the owner of this hat has also taken many different safety courses for different types of work sites and conditions. They make all kinds of stickers, and some companies have their own internal ones. They can be for designated cell phone users, to safety certifications, to heavy equipment drivers and crane operators. Construction workers all over the world wear hats like this to keep their heads safe as they work. This was my husband's marching band hat. I was a choir kid myself, but we didn't get to wear such cool hats. There are a lot of hats in books, and no, I don't mean actual hats in books. I mean, there are a lot of characters in books that have distinguished hats. For instance, how about Where's Waldo? He wears a red and white beanie that should be easy to find, but it always turns out much harder than you think. Then there's the man with the big yellow hat from Curious George. Did you know his name was Ted? Next up, there's a rainy day friend, the cat in the hat. Anytime this hat comes around, you know that there's going to be some mischief afoot. Next, let's take a trip following the second star to the right and straight on till morning. Do you remember what book this is from? If you said Peter Pan, you would be correct. But also, don't forget that Captain Hook also had a very distinguished hat as well. Next up is one of my favorite characters, the Mad Hatter from Alice in Wonderland. What I find most interesting is the fact that a lot of hat makers did in fact go mad. Going all the way back to the 1800s, hat makers, also known as hatters, would use dangerous chemicals like mercury in the hat making process. Prolonged exposure to these chemicals slowly started to cause erratic and flamboyant behavior, thus leading to the phrase we still have today, mad as a hatter. Don't forget about the hat that sorts you into your Hogwarts house. Yep, I'm talking about the sorting hat from Harry Potter. Let's talk about a book that has a lot of hats. In Caps for Sale, the peddler has a lot of caps on his head all at once. But how many hats do you think you can have on your head at one time? These are just some examples of hats and books. Watch out for hats in your reading. My favorite hats to wear are regular old sports themed caps. It doesn't matter to me whether it's basketball, football, or baseball, I like them all. Sports hats can be used to help keep your head warm in the winter, hide the public from a very bad hair day, and finally, this Makarapa is sure to help you get into the spirit when cheering on your favorite soccer team. People throughout the world have many things in common, and one of these things is hats and fashion. Hats might be a sign of somebody's status or role in society, or it could just be simple protection from the sun. Let's go ahead and explore some hats throughout the world and throughout history. This is a conical straw hat that is typical in Southeast Asia. It is a practical lightweight design that is primarily used as protection from the sun. This style of hat has many variations. It's used in Vietnam, Cambodia, Laos, Malaysia, Myanmar, the Philippines, China, and Japan. Similarly, this is a Fulani hat that originates from the Fulani people who live in West Africa. This hat is also conical and made of fiber, but it has leather decorations on top. It is interesting to see how different cultures can overlap and be similar in style, and they use the same materials. This is a sombrero, which is Spanish for hat. 
Did you know that sombrero literally translates to shadower? As you can see, it is a different style, but the wide brim indicates its purpose, which is to shade the wearer from the sun. This is a kafiye, a traditional Arabian headdress. It is fashioned from a square scarf and is usually made of cotton. This kafiye is commonly found in arid regions such as the Middle East. This kafiye provides protection from sunburn, dust, and sand. I just listed four different types of hats, but you could see plenty of things that each hat had in common. I'm sure that if the hats had plenty of things in common, the people who wear it would also have many things in common. Can you think of any other hats? Have you ever heard of a 10 gallon hat? Well, this jug has one gallon of water in it. Do you think even an oversized cowboy hat could hold 10 gallons of anything? Probably not. So why do we call them 10 gallon hats then? My favorite explanation is that it came from the Spanish phrase tan galan, which could be translated to mean very gallant or handsome or dapper. But the next time you hear someone talk about a 10 gallon hat, you know it's probably an exaggeration. Welcome to my house of haute couture. My name is Edna Mole, and I'm in search of fashion. I've traveled the globe in search of hats and let me show you some of the fabulous designs that I've found throughout the world. about hats today. They're used for so many things, from sun protection to social signaling. People all over the world wear hats. If you'd like to learn more about hats, check out the Fort Worth Public Library's catalog at fortworthtexas.gov slash departments slash library. If you're looking for some good books about hats for bedtime, I recommend this picture book, The Bedtime Bonnet by Nancy Amanda Redd. For our readers who want to learn more about 10 gallon or cowboy hats, I recommend this juvenile nonfiction title, The Boss of the Plains, The Hat That Won the West, about John Stetson, written by Lori Carlson and illustrated by Holly Mead. For a silly story about hats and their owners, I recommend I Want My Hat Back by John Clausen. To make books more convenient to pick up at a location near you, the library has a button over here for Place on Hold. Click there, enter your library card number and password, then choose a library close to you to pick it up from. We'll let you know when it arrives, and we have curbside service. Just call your local branch when your holds are ready and they'll help you. Don't forget, residents of Fort Worth can apply for a library card online at fortworthtexas.gov slash departments slash library. Thanks for joining us, and we'll see you next time. Bye!